Thank God for blessing us these last couple of services. That was a pleasant surprise. And we fasted, we did some fasting. Apparently, the Lord hasn't forgotten our efforts to please Him. And so, we certainly want to thank Him. We give His name all the praise. You'll find me tonight in Colossians. I didn't get to the last time around. Encourage you tonight. If you have something, say something. The table is always open. And so last last week we were trying to get through second chapter. Did I get through the second chapter last night or did I stop at the end of the first? Did I, did I finish the first chapter and was embarking on the second? No, I did. I did start. I did. I did. I did. And so, Let us start the first verse then. God will it be new what great conflict I have for you and for them. And they are said. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love. And unto all the riches of full assurance, of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and the Father, and of the Father and of Christ. We talked about the conflict. Praise Him. Amen. We already seen pretty much as a traitor. Preaching to the Gentiles. He was the chaplain of the Gentile part of the church. And of course the Jews felt some kind of way about that. And um, persecuted the Jews before he got saved. So his ministry stayed under attack. Now, to add salt to the wound, we have a group down here at the Colossian Church with uh, <coughs> heresy, heretic views, and teaching things that they ought not. And I'm saying how that that first century church, although it was pure, clean in the beginning, had the same issues we have today. Praise the Lord. All manner of, all manner of uh, disobedience folk doing stuff, got their own private little interpretations running through other congregations. And they would have Jews still trying to keep the law alive, teaching that you can't really be saved without some form of that law being engrafted into grace. So, 
He said that their hearts might be comforted and knit together in love. So if we're going to have unity, it's got to be in love. Because haters ain't looking for love. Haters always look for something to complain about. You know, children in the marketplace spirit. Uh, fault finders, the marketplace saints, they were fault finders. You know, with, with Christ. And so he was he was in conflict at ministry. And he added Laodicea as well. But he said, in whom I hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge to combat that dreaded doctrine that they had, that you had to have the secret. There were great secrets that you had to know. Sister Karen, you say, Paul was not knowing that. Then the milk, you got Jesus, you got everything. Everything. And so, it goes on now. He says, In this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. We touched on that. That be careful who you're listening to. And I want to say that seduces spirit. Is as subtle as you can believe. First of and uh, more, excuse me, more dangerous though to the baby saints. The baby saints, they don't know how to handle this word in the beginning. And oftentimes coming in off the street, the gentleman. Idea for the center man coming off the street is when you come in the church, everybody said. That's how they think. That's how when they come in, they look for everybody to be saved. Poor thing. When they sit a while and begin to see people's conduct, then they begin to sort of realize everybody in the church is not saved. But to God, when they have a question, they're going to ask somebody to say it. If they ask the wrong one, that's going to be their first wrong turn. They ask the wrong one, and you would think that saints, if somebody asks you a question and you really don't know the answer, can you please say, I don't know? Or try to guide them to somebody you feel may know without you throwing dirt at the game, saying things that could trip them up for a very long time. And so all of these things uh, were in full motion in the first century church. He says, but for though, verse 5, I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, doing what? I'm enjoying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. And so once you get saved, be steadfast. Don't be so easily moved about with opinion. Because opinion has rocked the church mightily. And I'm gonna tell you right now, we don't have no, we don't have any problem giving out opinion. And then got the nerve to use half a scripture to back your opinion. No context, no uh, real.
real effort to bring out of the word of God what was intended. It's just a half of scripture. And, and we've, we've all done it at some point. Some innocently and some malicious. So we got to learn after we get our legs under us. Uh, those half verses that you heard quoted a hundred years ago, there's more to it. Praise the Lord. There's more to it. And when you do your homework, ministers, deacons, elders, those ones that the scripture had uh, 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 instructed you to be apt to teach. If you don't be apt to teach, then study. Nobody should be up on the table talking about, yeah, well, off the top of my head. Well, my head, what's on the top of your head? Put into this word your time. Your time. And come away with a true understanding of what the scripture is trying to say. May not be saying what you think it is. May not be saying what you think it is. And so he's admonishing them that he's glad to see that they're steadfast. Glad to see it. And those brothers come down to the Baltimore church. And they weren't saved. They weren't saved. They weren't claiming to be saved. But they were so enthusiastic about learning. They would read that Bible. And they would read. And they'd come to the Bible class ready to get in and be a part of the discussion. And I, I told Mom, I said, Mom, we got in this word, or they were brought us over. They will run you over. Because sometimes the world is more enthusiastic about learning scripture than we are. Oftentimes we walk around uh, on this false bravado that we already have, and you ain't got nothing. Rich man and Lazarus. The rich man and Lazarus. Anybody know the rich man's name? These brothers do. They do. They knew the rich man's name. Sometimes, I don't know, they look like a theater in here. Cups are seen like this and that. I mean, rappers, candy rappers, everything but the pop. 
popcorns and pops. It's not a theater. We have to be the church. Not only when it's your time to tell somebody something. Be the church. Attend. I saw it last night that us has told us to stand. We ain't stand. This whole sex right here made six people scared. What's that? You're going around for the offer and they call you to stand, stand. If you don't have anything put in on you, now they have the cash out and all that. I'm going to take a step out of the way so the rest of the people are now to come to search for an hour we can have people sit with that. Beholding your what? Order. There shouldn't be no frenzy. It shouldn't be confusion. It should be order. Then it goes on to say, as ye, verse 6, have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as he had been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. That's our problem. We not rooted. We not grounded. We not built up. <coughs> That's why we all go to the place, like the rage and sea. The Lord will have us to be rooted. When you get the Holy Ghost, begin to plant your feet, drive down your state, and hold on. Because the church is so mixed up. It's already messed up and then it's uh, social media. Everybody but their grandma is preaching. No training. No nothing. Something you're looking at with your natural mind. Trying to pull out there. You didn't win the border road. You're standing in your living room. And you have a service. And we no wisdom at all. Just eating it up, eating it up, eating it up. And don't have a clue what it is they're talking about. But you don't have to go that far. Have it right in the head. Preacher say something. You got about six people that immediately will, 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 will disagree. Everybody knows more than leadership. And you eat it. You're not rooted. You're not being built up doing that. You're not being built up doing that. And I want to say that when that happens, you have just got off the road and headed down the wrong road. There's no light in that. There's no honesty. There's no truth. You know what truth will do? If you study your Bible and something comes contrary to what you feel like the Lord gave you, how come your hand don't go up? The hand up. That's not disrespectful. Not to me. Uh, a pastor teacher. When I was reading, I felt like uh, this was this, and that was that. The way it came to me was this, that. And now either you're going to be right or no. And 
and Gretchen come on board and I'll be some backup scripts if I need to say it last night. If you really feel that way, why are you in the dark room? How come you don't come out in the class and say what you feel God is telling you? That's how you move in truth. You're not going to lie your way up here. That's a lie that that devil is telling you. You're not going to lie all around and end up up here. It's not going to happen. You're not going to buy your way up here. You're not going to slide your way up here. You're going to attend or contend honestly, righteously, asking God to help you. For, and don't you know he will? Don't you know the Lord will give you understanding? He's not, he's not, he's not uh, uh, showing favoritism. He don't do that. Those who would contend properly, he'll give you what you need to serve. Believe me. But the crook and the, the, the hook and crook way, that's not church. That's the world. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to tell you right now, real easy to throw stones up this way, and I'm not constant. I'm just trying to make a point. Real easy to throw stones up this way. I want to remind you, though, each one of us, especially being married with family, you take a piece of the church home. That's your church. That piece you take, that's your church. Wonder what I'm going to see when I examine you. Is it like Solomon? Is everybody happy? Is everybody in order? Is everybody going through this straight? Or is it chaos? Don't be so quick to throw stones. Just like, just like, your mother and your father trying to train you. You said that's shaking your head. Yeah, you got to go and do something else. You can't blame mom and dad for that. They're trying their best to put it in you. And oftentimes, when you go out there, the world choke all the instruction out of you. And you take good word, good counsel, and place it in the nearest receptor. And go ahead on about your business. Don't, you can't blame the parent for that. He's doing his. He's doing his. And it ain't all ice cream either. That belt sometimes. Then you come in here. Half of my work is because you ain't doing your work. You bring your piece to church, you bring your piece to church, you bring your piece to church. And everybody, everybody don't they supposed to it be one accord. But if you saw a discord at home, ain't no way in the world you're gonna look for peace and unity here.
I'll do it. I'll follow the wrong thing. I'll follow the wrong word. Just so many can be friends. Five parents up. They'd be five parents up. Because the parents tell you, well, Satan, you listen. They don't mean you no good. They don't mean you no good. You stay plumb away from them. You stay plumb away from them. And what do we do? The office. They hold them on their tongue. They ain't been out here in years. They end up somewhere you don't, you don't want to be. So the idea when you come to church is that once you get that Holy Ghost, group, they down, drive in your state, and don't let no foolishness drive you off. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you won't be saved long. Because the devil is not ashamed. To show all, saying all manner of things. We, we, over here, you have to be courageous. You got to be. I know the brother told me, said, that's all my conversation. I said, you didn't join the wrong group. You didn't join the wrong group. Because the devil, he walks about looking. To see who he may be by. And here you come, Abby, go back. He smiles, he smiles when you come. Because he's going to mess you up. And we're eating a lot of junk, eating a lot of junk. Don't even have enough courage to say, don't say that. Don't, don't do that. You're not supposed to do that. And you know plumb well. When the Holy Ghost is talking and when he's not, the Holy Ghost just ain't going to say certain things. We said, they eat, eat, eat. Then when Father takes that strap out and whoops that backside, then you mad at Father. So unfair. So unfair. But you know what? Father ain't really paying a whole lot of attention to that. Because he's afraid for you. He's afraid for your future. And he knows if you don't get on that backside like the scripture told him to, you're going to end up somewhere crazy. Then, by and by, you done got tired of getting spanked. You sort of line up a little bit and walk right. You know what Father will do? You know what Father will do? Help you get your first car. He gonna help you get your first job. He gonna work with you. And then you know what you gonna say? You know, oh dad, he ain't that bad. He's not that bad. But the children of wisdom takes a long time to turn that corner. The children of the night seem to pick it up pretty good. So the Bible instructs us, as much as ye have received him, so walk ye in. And let me say, well, let me keep moving. Ruby then built up in the established of faith as he had been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. What are you talking about? Rudiments of the world. This the man-made wisdom, man-made knowledge. Things that sound like it's right and ain't right. We're supposed to be beyond that. And I want to say, too, that when you get the Holy Ghost, you more than mere men. We're more than that. If we let the Holy Ghost be built.
built up in us. We're more than that. We're more than that. That devil should make you drag us up and down the avenue. Like you do the sunset. Dragging us up and down the avenue. You got power. You got hunger. You got power to tell that demon, go sit down. Go sit down, sir. We shouldn't be happy feet when the devil attacks. Oh, well, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? You've got power with God to tell that contrary spirit, sit down. Are you doing that? Are you doing that in your life? Have you changed? Have you changed? Are you victorious in this walk? You can be. You can be victorious in this walk. You just have to hold your head up and tell that devil, I'm not taking it no more. Once in the world, that devil made a fool out of saying. And you go home sad and feel some kind of way of what he made you do that day. And you vow to the I ain't doing that. And the very next morning, you right back over there. He didn't drag you, caught you off guard. You sort of came out the house ready to fight him, but he caught you off guard. Got you right back over there doing stuff. You gotta tell that demon, no, not doing that, not doing that anymore. No more.
Because you're hungry. Everything looked good. I said, don't stop hungry. Don't make mistakes or don't make serious decisions angry. Wait till you calm down. You got something to say, don't do it while you're angry. Take a few minutes, come back down to earth so you can discuss it. Calm. Because I'm already upset and didn't hear you come to foolish. It's not going to line up even. It's from more likely to go over the top. Just wait till everybody calm down. And you can talk about it smoothly. I'm talking wisdom tonight. I'm talking about how we can get right back on one accord with that devil and come through here and been having a field day on us. We ain't praying like we're supposed to. We're not reading like we're supposed to. We're not really putting our shoulder to the wheel and coming through here like we're supposed to. Most of us just going off of emotion, carnality, and everything else. something, because for real, for real, when you read this, it's not that, it's not that deep, rooted and grounded, and so, okay, the problem, what makes it important is that you have an adversary that's set out to take your promise and your inheritance, that's what makes this important. It's not just, okay, we're going to get that to you. And you're good to go, and then we wait for the rest. No, the whole time while you wait, that devil's <coughs> intent is to steal your inheritance. And some of us, our inheritance been gone a long time. A long time. That's some of the stuff we do. You don't do that off the break. We've gone more callous, more hateful more mean, more. By the time we figure out what's going on, you reprobate. Mm -hmm. Pretty much reprobate. Say anything. Do anything. Go anywhere. Wear anything. The church, when the Holy Ghost comes, the church teaches how to act. Where and when not to go. What and what not to wear. All of that. But this generation, this untoward generation now, you ain't telling me what I can wear. I wear what I want. I wear, I put on what I want to wear. That ain't no sin. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. You ain't supposed to be looking like the world. We are bought with a price. Amen. The Lord purchased us with his own blood. How are you going to tell him what you're going to do and not going to do? That's where we are. That's where we are. <clears throat> That's what we've become. And that devil that made some of us in here so two-faced, straight up in there, smiling and acting like you with the program. You ain't been more with God's program than man in And I don't know who you are. I don't care. I was young and said, I guess I probably thought I should. Not now, I don't want to know. <coughs> Not like the one. I'm afraid who I'm going to see. Right here in God's house. That the first, the first 
time that type of thought came to me is when I realized why are they going to murder the Son of God in the very city he promised to put his name, Jerusalem. You talking about us slapping God's face right in his city, the city of God, the city of peace. Why would you choose to murder him there? And look who did the church of his name. a nicer man than Christ? Who was more gentle than our Lord? Who was more fair and more merciful than our Lord? And you murdered. They want it according to how they think it should be. We saw that when Jesus died, with the two men going to Emmaus. Oh, we had hope that he wouldn't be uh, murdered, and that he would do this, that, and the other. What about that? Jesus had to upbraid them. Call them wicked and slow of heart to believe because the scriptures told you exactly what his name would be and his purpose for coming. Y'all on the way home with an attitude when you should be back home in Jerusalem celebrating with the rest of the saints. The whole world. Call them fool. Exactly. Slow of heart to believe. It's rooted and built up. It's powerful. You gotta do it because the enemy, his job is to take it. His job is to take it. His job is to steal your joy and your inheritance and anything else God wants to give you.
jumped on that. You preach love too. You didn't jump on that. You said it a million times. Faith word about love. You ain't jump on that. You sit there right now and go to the hospital or not to the hospital, go home. And either be overcome by your illness or be healed. You're going to stand on that thing. You won't stand on love. What's up with that? Tell you what's up with that. We have people who will wear concrete boots to look safe. <laughs> we'll put on the longest dress we can find. We'll turn our nose down at everybody else. They will think of wearing a necklace. Do all of the outward show and not a bit of love. Excuse me for a second. This ain't made up. Go to the pray. Pray. Somehow that part of the message was swept under the rug. I caught the visible part. <coughs> that heart. That heart, man. Is what? What is the time? Desperately quick. Desperately quick. Turn it, spin it, no trash. 
can't say to get on board with our Lord. We know that to get anywhere with God, we have to be willing and obedient. You know what they're calling that now? Yes, man. Same way in school. You got a few up here trying to get their lesson. Doing their homework, studying, trying to come through there like they're supposed to come through there. And baby and them calling it. Nerds. Picked on. Made fun of. For getting that less. I did too. But when we grew up, guess what? They got the job. And we were on a corner calling ourselves cool. Ain't had nothing. I don't say. I don't say. The nerds, they were living good. And we were cool. And broke. seen Christ make a fuss over title. Have you? No. He called me 
himself some money. He ain't called himself cheap nothing. Some man. I'm Jesus whom he seeks. That's it. And had more glory, more power, more wisdom, more righteousness, more everything. And when you talk to him, it's just as plain and lowly and meek. I'll tell you that. Someday he was alluding to his messiahship. Son of David, son of David. She said, who is that? Bring him, bring him over here. Make all that noise. Bring him over here. Because there were many in the crowd that had questions about who he was. You know, when, when Obama was president, I, I, I understand it, but why are you always questioning his citizenship? Was that all? I mean, all of that was straightened out when he ran for office. You can't run if your citizenship ain't right. But they buffeted him, buffeted him, buffeted him about his citizenship. And that demon, that's what he does to us. He buffeted us about our citizenship. So if you so say, how come you sick all the time? If you so say, how come you can't put two pennies together? If you so say, how come nobody like you? If you so say, why you live over there in that neighborhood? That has nothing to do with nothing. Because <laughs> my life is here in Christ, and you never going to see me. Until he shall appear. And we appear with him. You ain't gonna never really see me until he comes in his glory. Wow. Okay. Okay, you was with crimes. I thought this was living over there. Didn't they say that about my Lord? They esteemed him what? And what? And what? That's how they saw the law. They had no good report on him. Oh, it's poor. Look at him. Oh, wow. See, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. You ever hit your face from people? You know how it is when you don't want them to speak to you? And all of a sudden, you very interested in that bee on the wall over there. We try to get your attention, trying to make you don't want to speak. Get you. The law from glow. Isn't that something? And the first message, Peter said, This same Jesus, who you treated like that? God had made him both. That means he was already the anointed one. Now he's ruler. He decides who come in the church and who don't. Isn't that wonderful? You want to get to know him. Paul said that I might win Christ. Those things that were gained to me, I don't see them like that no more. Count, but um, that I might win Christ. Are we trying to win Christ tonight? Truly? Or we just want to have our way in this present world? In this present world, your best blessing, I don't care what uh, you hit the lolly for 70 days, your best blessing is going to be fragmental and temporary. I don't care how rich you is, you still got to deal with death. I mean, love you. Your means ain't going to help you bad. Okay, how rich you is, that devil going to buffet your body. Huh? 
I don't care how rich you is, you still in this corruption. You get no pass, the money don't give you a pass. Sit in here long enough, all of y'all be making that bathroom move. Get rich you is. Huh? You ain't special. I said, you make the excuse. <laughs> Money only takes you so far. circumcision made without hands, all flesh is taken off of us. Spurge. I'm talking about lust, appetites, concupiscence, these kinds of things. God strips you. Do y'all hear me? Not only that, he's forgiven everything we did, wanted to do, thought about doing it, all of that, he was forgiven everything. That's a low blow of your mind. And then, that soul that was dead was erected when the Holy Ghost came. We were dead. And our soul knew nothing about living for God. Nothing. We were going strictly on how we feel in the flesh. Save your flesh to save your inner man. Inner man separate. Inner man separate. And the flesh got nervous. Because he knows his time, his rest of his time is in trouble. All the things he likes. I to speak to you. Lord Laura, she got that time or something. She said, did you see me get back there? I said, I saw you. 
I saw you on the telephone, so I took a picture. I thought, you know that man, don't you? She said, what? I said, no more dancing. <laughs> Likes to dance. She said, yeah, man, I got a shout. <laughs> I'm supposed to be glad about it. <laughs> I'm talking about the flesh. When the Holy Ghost come on board, it's war time. The battle begins. The spirit against the flesh. Y'all hear me? It's war time. And that, that demon, that flesh, his appetites sap up 10 degrees. You know how it is when you wrap your mind around this fast coming up. The flesh start hurting all the time. You don't have to be ashamed. Especially if we call them for three days. The flesh is feeling some kind of Believe me. Can we? Can we? Can we? He's grasping for straw. All of the things that flesh love, the soul is going to be against them. I'm talking about with real holy. Real holy though. That's why when you come through, you don't speak in tongues and then go sit down. You build up. You stay put for a good little while, don't run off, and get that thing in you good. Y'all hear me? Don't run off, come friends away. Keep the altar hot. Keep the altar hot. Because you in for a fight. I said you in for a fight. Not only those times, all of those chains. All of those bonds, all of those feathers that had you held down for all them years, you got to take that off. You got to take that off and put on Christ. Do you hear me? How do you put on Christ? Obeying his word. How do you walk in the spirit? Obeying the word. That's what, how do you pray in the spirit? Obeying his word. Praying according to his word. If we think as soon as you say spirit, you, you, it means tongues. How many tongues? Some people mean praying in the spirit, mean praying in tongues. That don't mean that. It means praying according to his word. Walking in the spirit is walking according to the word. Come through with the whole though. We celebrate you. But I gotta tell you that you in for a fight. You can't just go in the back, man. Yeah, I'm done with that. I'm done with that awful scene. No, it's not like that. It's gonna be harder for you to come to church now than it was before you got saved.
devil don't know everything, but he has watched us for years. And if he knows what you say, you get around the corner. Because guess what? You're talking to him. said it once, and I'll say it again. When you stay home a lot, you revert back to who you used to be before God blessed you. Y'all hear me? It's here you get rooted and grounded. Not at home. I'm talking about those who want to say Because I'm going to tell you right now, that devil, he hit more than you. The same will take off from time to time. That devil ain't taking off. Oh, he gonna be here. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, his work ethic is impeccable. <laughs> you think you got good attendance on your job? That devil is, uh, he's perfect. <laughs> and he's here watching who can and who not. And so we're buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye have risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. So when you get up, when he saved you, Brother Brandon, you're going to have a whole new outlook. Your direction is going to be different. Your thinking is going to be different. That's your soul. Seeing the world for the first time, he's dead. He's wild about how beautiful everything is. You don't want to love everybody. You don't want to be friends with everybody. You don't want to try to help everybody. I mean, you're going to be just messed up with love. Praise the Lord. You're going to be messed up with the love of God shared abroad you, because it's new. It's new. You're going to be messed up. Don't give away all our stuff. I used to have to tell that to my mom. Don't, don't do that. Is she done? Right 
want to do right. I want to do right. Oh, how bad they are. It's not fan bad. It's not great big. It's something like that. It's just God working in us. Very well, then we're back to the praise by the faith of our God. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh had he quickened together with him. Having what? You all forgave all of them. That's powerful. That's powerful. I mean, I look at that. You could these guys being sentenced and the jury come back. Uh, first offense, bone, <coughs> not guilty. Second offense, not guilty. Third offense, uh, guilty. You know what's going on? Guilty. Mm -hmm. So now I like six charges. He's guilty about three of God forgave all of them. He dropped the charge. Oh, have mercy. That alone should have a shout every Sunday at what it says. He's too tired to give God his praise, and you free. And you know you shouldn't be. I'm going to stop right there because I'm going to let y'all out early. Don't say it, and let y'all out early. Any questions? Any comments? Tell us his name, you gave him credit to because if it's the wrong scripture. <laughs> Thank you. 